People often ask me, Stephen, what are your daily rituals that give you the edge? First off, I'll start my day whilst the world is still asleep. That means 5 a.m. I'm ready to go. Then 33 minutes of meditating to get me in the right headspace, followed by 165 push-ups. 5 a.m. starts, are you kidding me? I love my sleep too much. I'm Stephen Bartlett, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm an investor, and I'm the host of the Diary of a CEO podcast. Hello. Sit. This is my dog, Pablo. He is seven or eight years old now. How old are you? Eight? He's nearly eight. I had so many light bulb moments with my relationship with Zoe. The first was, I didn't even realize that what Zoe did was a possibility. Yet, I'd lived for many years with this idea that some food is just good and some food is just bad. But logically, understanding that our bodies are unique in and of themselves, of course, there's a certain nutritional jigsaw piece that would fit me. I then had a conversation with Tim Spector, who's one of the co-founders of Zoe on my podcast. Um, his wealth of expertise, his perspective were very, very compelling to me. And then I got a Zoe kit myself, tried the whole um, end-to-end -end journey. And for me, it felt like a inevitability. And that's really the, the paradigm shift that Zoe created in me, which was now I should be in search of my relationship with food as it relates to multiple different factors in my body, my blood sugar levels, my blood fat um, response, and my gut microbiome. Taking the Zoe test was the first time I got to understand what the gut microbiome was. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. I had had gut pains for maybe four years, and I just assumed I was in some way broken. Before I started Zoe, there was a real unpredictability to how I might feel the next day. And that's quite concerning for me because the next day I might need to perform in some way. I might be speaking on stage, I might be on TV, I could be doing a podcast conversation with somebody really important. I would often feel, you know, brain fog, low energy, lethargic. The lights weren't on to what was causing that. So I'd often have to show up in really important situations, not feeling my best, um, and then perform lower than my, my best, and then have regret because for some reason I just wasn't on my game that day. Life was like playing roulette in terms of my nutrition. Um, and then after Zoe, and after I had the information that Zoe provides about the relationship, my personal relationship with the food I'm eating, I would feel in a much better mood. And emotionally, I'd, be, I'd respond to situations in a way that I was much more proud of. You know, it's really been life-changing. One of the things that I learned from my conversation with Tim Spector is how you can make small additions to your existing plate to bring up the overall food score. Um, and he taught me a trick. He said, what you gotta do is you get a, a big jar of nuts and seeds. You reach into it, big handful, and you just sprinkle it on what you're having already. And that can give you 12 to 13 of the 30 plants that we should be aiming to eat per week. But even in this meal here, there's about half of the plants that I'm aiming to have in a week. There's about 15 plants just in this combination of foods here. Um, and of course, maybe the most important thing of all, the good fat, extra virgin olive oil, which by putting that on top of pretty much all of my foods, that's um, really bringing my overall Zoe scores up. My objective here is to diversify my gut microbiome. Um, and that's a, a simple hack that I've been using to do it. He goes, say it to my face. Let's hide in. Who said money? I am a competitive sleeper. I say that in jest, but I people think that I don't sleep because I'm very, very busy, but sleep is a non-negotiable for me. Um, that always seems to surprise people because they think I don't sleep, but I think I sleep better than anybody. I'm incredibly unorganized which I think is surprising because people think that you need to be really organized to be successful in business. People are surprised that I don't like coffee. I drink it when I have to for utility, but I don't drink it out of like the joy or by preference. 
I work out pretty much every day of the week. So for breakfast, I'm looking to have something that is incredibly nutrient dense, that has the fibers, the polyphenols over here, and of course the proteins as well. And I'll try and eat a high fiber, high protein, high polyphenol diet, both before and after I work out. And before Zoe, my workouts would vary wildly in terms of the quality and the energy I had when showing up to the gym. With Zoe, all of my workouts are significantly better. Um, I seem to show up to the gym with more energy, um, in a better mood, and I seem to be able to work out and sustain the endurance for longer. Me and my partner have been doing Zoe now for about a year, and we both have two very different sets of results and we found that our relationship with the same food is entirely different. Because me and my partner live in the same house and we end up eating the same foods, because we're now both on the same level of knowledge about our gut microbiome, our blood fat response, our glucose responses, which are both entirely different. I know hers, she knows mine. If you looked at our fridge before and after Zoe, you'd see entirely different things. In my fridge now, because we shop together as well, so we're on the same mission together. The top section of my fridge is all fermented stuff. The second level of my fridge is all salad-based stuff. And then as of yesterday, there is this massive bowl of seeds and nuts, this like massive jar of it. And in the door of my fridge, there's these like industrial-sized barrels of kombucha. My fridge looks entirely differently because of Zoe. It's empowered us to make better decisions. I was born in Botswana. I moved to Devon, Plymouth when I was a baby. And I spent about 16 years in the Southwest of the UK in Devon. And then I moved to Manchester where I lived between Manchester and New York for about seven or eight years before moving to London, where I've lived now for about three years in total. The reason I am an entrepreneur is because I had a huge amount of independence when I was younger. And I had a huge burning desire through insecurity, through shame, through being different to have the things that my peers had. That void of independence and that huge driving force of shame and insecurity led me to start experiments at a young age. Those experiments turn into belief, and that belief is the greatest macro tailwind to drive you over any obstacle that life might throw at you. To switch off and relax, I watch Manchester United play. I watch the football every weekend, pretty much. I get a lot of massages. I like to write as well, and I like to watch videos that teach me stuff about a wide variety of different subjects from artificial intelligence to rockets to um, psychology videos to robots, quantum computing, anything, just things that stimulate me intellectually. That's what I do for fun. But to be fair, I love my work so much that if I have free time, most of it I'd spend like thinking about ideas and building stuff and getting excited about that. The only reason why I, I sometimes do struggle to sleep is because I go to bed a little bit too inspired or a little bit too excited about a business, an idea, or the potential of something that we're working on. In my health and my fitness, my goal in 10 years time is to be consistent. And I think when you have that as a goal, you design your relationship with food and fitness and your health to be a sustainable one. I try and find things that I think I could sustain for a decade. My goal is consistency because I think that's also the hardest thing. It's also the goal that can never be completed and that you get a shot at every single day. And I think with that, you're never going to become unanchored in terms of your motivation. I have a sand timer in my office because a sand timer is a visual way of seeing the time that I have pouring away and it acts as a reminder to allocate my time against my values um, in a way that I'll be proud of. Spending time having a good lunch, it means spending time with my friends and family, it means spending time in the gym. And although metaphorically I can't see how much sand I have left, knowing that it exists I think gives you the urgency to fulfill your life's most important goals. And I guess in part that's why I started using Zoe because I wanna live a longer and a healthier life. I wanna extend my health span, which effectively gives me more sand in the sand timer. And Zoe does exactly that. By being part of Zoe and having more information about how the things I'm putting in my body extend my sand timer or reduce it, I'm able to make the choice to live a longer and a happier life. And that gives me more sand back. Yeah, mate.